friends, Logan Myers here checking in with you from Cinefellas. I just checked out Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and I'm a little underwhelmed. I'll give you this. I've been a huge fan of Batman my whole life since the 80s. He was the, the true superhero that got me into reading comics. I saw the first movie with Michael Keaton, uh, the Tim Burton Batman film in 1989 in Maine. So I've been a, a huge fan my whole life. 30 years plus. And, I, you know, in the past few years, we had Christopher Nolan put out a great trilogy of The Dark Knight. I think that was done really well. We've had a shit ton of other Batman movies along the way with Joel Schumacher. And I remember seeing Val Kilmer and George Clooney as Batman. Those are kind of a joke. Michael Keaton will always be my favorite Batman because as a kid, he was the first Batman I saw on the big screen. And he played it with such, such ease and perfection that I don't think anybody else did it justice. Chris, or, you know, Christopher Nolan's Batman, we had Christian Bale that was just over the top of the voice. Um, and just other characters just didn't do it right, didn't do it justice. So I think Michael Keaton will always be my favorite. But obviously we had, you know, the Christopher Nolan trilogy and the introduction to Joker played by Heath Ledger that was fucking phenomenal. Probably the best, best role of his and probably one of the best Batman movies, um, obviously. So, when I heard about Zack Schneider, he basically brought back Superman and did it right with Man of Steel. <clears throat> so, it was great that he was going to bring Batman and Superman, you know, in the ultimate duel and ultimate battle. It was, you know, announced two or three years ago. And now, finally, we're getting to see these two characters, these two superheroes in the DC Universe go at it head to head. So DC is trying to bring their A game. They got their heavy contender, the Marvel Universe, that is basically conquering the world right now. So Zack Schneider had to bring his A game for this for this specific film because he's going against all these other Marvel films that are put out each year, and it's about time that we take these DC characters, you know, seriously. We've had the shitty uh, Green Lantern movie that went nowhere. But the last Superman movie, Band of Steel, was actually really excellent. So I was intrigued to see how he was going to incorporate a new Batman and Ben Affleck, Batfleck, and then, you know, bringing these other sub characters into this film too, to kind of basically open it up for the Justice League. In the opening of the movie, we're yet again giving a shot of young Bruce Wayne with his parents. Outside the movie theater where they're gunned down and you see the, his mother's pearls falling down and they like zoom into it. It's like, how many times are they going to do this in a Batman movie? I, I was hoping they would take a different approach, but it was kind of redundant from the other films. And I didn't like it from the, from the get-go. Um, and then you're kind of taken into to Bruce's parents' funeral and Bruce falls into a cave and he's risen by the great spirit of bats. And hence the Batman is is born, really, which we already know about. Um, and then we're, we're taken to an older Batman, which is played by Ben Affleck. If you don't know him, you're not American. He's been in a shit ton of movies. Um, recently, he was in some good ones and ones he directed. So I was interested to see his perspective on this character. Is he going to have the Boston accent? Or is he going to play it just clean and just going to get the character perfect, you know, with the voice and... I think he did an overall good job as Bruce Wayne <clears throat> in the movie. He's an older version. He's pissed off. He experienced Superman and uh, Zod duking it out. And they basically uh, destroy one of Bruce Wayne's uh, buildings. As you can see from the Man of Steel movie at the very end. You see the Wayne building in the background. So he's pissed off at Superman. Why the hell he took down you know, this... His building and why did he kill these innocent people and there's a really cool you know car sequence where you can see in the trailer where Ben Affleck's taken off to the crash site um, the Wayne buildings you know fall into pieces and he's zooming through traffic he gets out and he runs into the cloud and that was pretty cool that was a cool intro I did enjoy that part but we, we kind of see a different ro uh, a role reversal here where Man of Steel is seen as the hero the god in this movie he's seen as more of a killer for sequence with uh, Zad and all these people that died and they're like he's not good he's he's the devil he's a killer so Bruce Wayne's going after him to find out some information and 
and basically take this guy out. He's pissed off. He lost a lot of his friends and colleagues over this big war with Zod. <clears throat> and it's hard to say if is Superman the bad guy? Is Batman the good guy? We don't know because I mean my major problem with this movie is the writing. The writing is all over the place. And you just get lost, you know, as the movie progresses. I'm sure I'm not the only one that just kind of lost, got lost in, in the shuffle of, of really bad things in this movie. From the writing to some of the soap opera acting to the CGI. You go in high expectations and you get lost amongst the way because you don't really know what the hell's going on. And you just, it's all over the place. Um, but Lex Luthor was actually portrayed very well by Jesse Eisenberg. He's that cliche tool bag, pretentious tool bag that he always plays in every movie. It seems like the social network and adventure land and everything. But I think this was a good part for him because he's that young Lex Luthor that doesn't give a shit about anything. He wants to take over the world. Um, and he has such a creepiness and a maniac vibe about him, especially a few scenes where he's talking to Senator Fit Finch that was played by Holly Hunter. He, he didn't know if he was going to kill her or do something, but just had a weird vibe about him. And he's always like hitting his fingers against the table. And but essentially his character comes into play after some of his uh, researchers found some kryptonite in the Indian Ocean, I believe, and found out a way that they could weaponize this crypt kryptonite and basically take out mankind. But which, you know, if you read the comics, you'd be familiar with that. And that's his overall part in the movie is getting his hand, he got his hands on the kryptonite and wants to weaponize it. Um, and that's when the senator comes in to the story and obviously they're like, hell no, you can't do this. You can't take out mankind, you psycho little turd. But yeah, there's, besides him, there's some other uh, side characters that are thrown in. Wonder Woman was just kind of thrown into the mix of things for no apparent reason, it seemed like. Um, her character was solid, but she just kind of met up with Bruce Wayne at a party and Bruce is trying to get some of Lex Luthor's data from a server and she takes it and opens Pandora's box of the Justice League, basically. Um, they find from the hard drive that's a glimpse of the Flash and Aquaman and Cyborg and how they're gonna wrap that into the Justice League. Gal Gadot's character as, you know, as Wonder Woman, I thought it was really well done. I'm really excited for her standalone film that's coming out. And her small part in this movie, Batman vs. Superman, was actually, it was, it was one of the best performances because she just kicked fucking ass and she came out at the end, you know, as you see from the trailers and with her and Batman and Superman, and she just goes at it and it's really good. The camera works awesome on her and her shield and her sword and the, the costume looks great. So she was definitely believable as Wonder Woman and I'm excited for the future with her character. But unfortunately in this movie, it was lack thereof. It was just thrown in like a lot of other shit that made no sense. The last act of the film is actually where we get to see some fucking fighting, some good action. And of course you've guessed it, Lex Luthor put the, the whole duel together over some stupid, you know, boys love their mothers. And um, so Superman goes after Batman and they have the fight scene, which is like five minutes long and it was really underwhelming. It was just really bad CGI, it just didn't look real. They got bored of it and then it just turned into this awkward connection they have over the word Martha. So they're like duking it out, they hate each other, trying to kill each other, then they say this word, they have a moment, now they're best friends. I don't know about you, in the real world it doesn't work that way. Obviously really weak and a really shitty part in the, the script and like how, how would that make sense and believable, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, they get out of that situation and Lex unleashes the one and only Doomsday. Doomsday, you look like a, a retarded Ninja Turtle from the Michael Bay production team. It looks so god awful. So Doomsday was thrown in this movie from, from the writing team for no apparent reason. It was basically Lex Luthor's concoction from Zod's uh, pod spaceship thing. Um, and he was just thrown in the mix to basically kill everyone and Batman and Superman. So of course, it takes you to a bigger fighting scene at the end where they're taking on Doomsday with Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. And that was kind of a cool scene. Like uh, when they zoom in, they had the fire in the background, they're like going at them. And that was one of the, the highlights of the film, the actual battle scene. I just wish they didn't drag it out 
so long to get to that point. Or, you know, throw in Doomsday, but whatever. Um, he looked like shit, but uh, the actual characters, the superheroes look good. Um, and they're getting down and dirty and, and taking, taking on Doomsday. Um, and again, Wonder Woman looked awesome. And overall, Batman had a pretty good presence. His I wasn't overall sold on Ben Affleck as, as Batman. It's just like the the overall armor and like this part with like the mask gets all fucked up. It just I didn't really buy it. I didn't like that as much. But Superman did his duty. Henry Cavill is is really good as the role of Superman. He plays it perfectly, and I thought he brought his A game to this for the most part. And overall, like Superman versus Batman and the whole CGI fight se- sequence at the end, it, it feels like a Zack Schneider movie. You could tell the color schemes and. The camera work, and even when they like zoom up on Wonder Woman and Batman and Superman, they're getting ready to to fight. It kind of reminded me of Sucker Punch, just like the way they did the camera and the colors and everything. And I'm like, yeah, it just seems like another movie. But Batman versus Superman, the whole movie, I was definitely unimpressed. I went in with really high expectations because I love Batman so much, and his character was so drawn out and dry at times that it didn't feel like. Batman was there because he kept looping into these imaginations and like backstories and and then he's Bruce Wayne and then he's hanging out in the Batcave. You just get lost amongst the murkiness of the script. It just wasn't a great Batman movie. Even Alfred, played by Jeremy Irons, just didn't feel like he was on par with the character. He just was like a side character that didn't have that normal Alfredness about him. Yeah, it's Master Wayne. It was just like, he was kind of poking fun at, at Bruce Wayne and saying like, hey, you're an alcoholic and I'm going to fix your gadgets. But it was, it, the character wasn't there. And that's unfortunate because Jeremy Irons is a really good actor. As a lot of people are in this movie, they just, the writing wasn't there. It didn't bring the acting across to the screen. It was just felt lazy and sloppy. I mean, even Amy Adams that had that charisma and Man of Steel, she was just kind of bland too. She just had these bland soap opera moments with with Clark Kent and then, you know, Superman. It just felt forced and it wasn't relaxed and it didn't feel authentic. I think overall Zack Schneider had the right intentions, but he he obviously failed to execute into the actual movie. I just came out really disappointed I, uh, when I came out of the movie theater. I didn't really like Superman or Batman, either, either of the characters, even, you know, the Batman fan that I am. I just didn't care. I didn't really like him. Uh, the Batman character at all, it just was a slop and it was kind of a joke, unfortunately. Um, but the other characters and, uh, you know, Wonder Woman was great and Superman was pretty good. And overall, I just didn't feel like I was satisfied. It was like 45 minutes too long. Cut out a lot of the soap opera and the, the reimagining bullshit. Get to the storyline. Build characters. Build their better backstory. So you're, you're believing it as, a, as an audience. And it just wasn't there. So if, you, if Zack Snyder can, can stick to keeping it to the plot, keeping a good story, bringing the acting across and bringing that, those superhero characters out... To build a better story, and if he, he would have done that, this movie would have been great, but unfortunately it was not, and I was thoroughly disappointed. So, Zack Schneider, Batman vs. Superman, I'm giving two out of five hair pieces. 